iOS 13 is shaping up to be a fairly big operating system refresh. I don't think it's going to be as huge as a ton of people are making it out to be, where Apple's gonna go back to skeuomorphism, they're gonna redesign every single app and every single aspect of iOS is fundamentally going to be changed like it did back with iOS 7. I wouldn't anticipate that, particularly if you just own an iPhone and you're expecting that all of your jailbreak tweaks are suddenly just going to be ported over into native iOS. No, I wouldn't go as far to say that. But if you are an iPad user, if these 95 Mac reports end up being real and end up being confirmed, which oftentimes 95 Mac is often proved correct, they have a pretty decent track record, then yeah, you should expect a fairly massive amount of change to come to the iPad, with a lot of other details in regards to all of iOS, iPhones, and iPads alike. Spilling in from a huge article from 95 Mac today, I'll be telling you all about it. Let's begin. <laughs> So obviously there's the main stuff you guys want to hear about the iPhone, but I mainly want to talk about the iPad first because it sounds more interesting to me. The biggest one being Windows support. So I'm not referring to Microsoft's Windows, okay? We're talking about being able to individually take an app and put it on top of a different app within the iPad's operating system. Now, because everything is so touch-based over on the iPad, that's why you haven't seen a lot of Windows or a lot of apps kind of be treated as resizable tiles as you do on a desktop because that's a lot easier to navigate with a mouse. That's how Windows has been doing it for years, and that's why they're called Windows, and that's how Mac has been doing it for years. We haven't been able to kind of accurately imitate it, though, on tablets very well without requiring a mouse to be plugged in so that people can manage those tiles differently. But it sounds like Apple is going to be trying to turn the iPad into more of a laptop slash desktop type experience with, of course, not including mouse support. I think that's the fundamental difference between a laptop and an iPad is their primary method of input. iPad's all about touchscreen. Sure, you can dock keyboards to it, but for the most part, you have to interact with that touchscreen, whereas laptops, you interact primarily with a mouse. There are laptops out there with touchscreens, but you'll notice that most of the time, people are going to end up using it with a mouse more than a touch interface anyway. So Apple trying to find this perfect middle ground to where you can open little windows, like for instance, if you were texting someone and you wanted to look at maps at the same time, you'd basically be able to launch the iPhone version of maps and put it on top of the iPad version of messages because iPhone version is a lot smaller. So similar to picture in picture, you'll just be able to throw that window anywhere on the screen so that you can keep looking at it while still texting someone, telling them directions or very common example I've seen brought up in the past is having a calculator window on top of a regular iPad app. Like you're taking notes for instance. And while you're taking notes, you want a calculator, not taking up half the screen or even a third of the screen, just a little portion of the iPad's OS so that if you need to do some calculations real quick as you're taking notes. The calculator's right there. You don't have to go back and forth between the calculator app and your notes app. But oh, wait a minute. iPad still doesn't have a calculator app built in by default. Oh my God. I feel like iOS 13 is the year of catch up. Like, oh yeah, we meant to get to that. I guess we're getting to it now. Things we've been asking for years for, we might finally be getting this year, hopefully. But yeah, anyway, there are plenty of applications where having Windows support on the iPad, being able to launch apps in kind of their iPhone-ish form in layer layering them on top of each other will be quite helpful for productivity. And they've also detailed the 95 Max report, the idea of being able to select multiple files will be easier than before and likely taking a lot of design tropes from the way Macs have worked for years, being able to click and drag and select lots of files simultaneously. They could be imitating something like that in iOS this year so that you'll be able to kind of hold and drag over lots of pictures or documents and select them all very quickly because right now there's a lot of people that have to hit select and then tap, tap tap, 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 and they have to select every single file, which gets redundant and is definitely less efficient for a ton of people than just being able to select lots of files like you do on your Mac. So I'm happy to hear that they're bringing that type of support over to the iPad. Not to mention, we've had previous reports stating that the iPad home screen will be drastically redesigned with iOS 13 to support likely things like widgets or maybe even the idea of apps showing you some content on the home screen before you launch that app. Like for instance, what if messages could show you the latest message you have on the home screen. So you don't have to open the app to see what the latest message is. It'll just show up right there on the home screen. Or your latest reminder will show up in a reminder tile that's a little bit bigger than just the standard app icon. In other words, what I'm trying to say is if these leaks end up being true, which as always take everything with a grain of salt, the iPad should be getting a pretty massive overhaul when it comes to iOS. Whether or not they'll allow the iPad Pro to support external drives like laptops do, which I know is a big deciding factor for a ton of people. That was one of the most common complaints 
complaints brought up with the iPad Pro switching to USB-C is that there's a ton of USB-C accessories that are limited by iOS, so that's why you can't use external drives with your iPad like you would a MacBook. They didn't go into any details about that, but if it ends up being true that they're redesigning the Files app to be a bit more customizable and give the user a bit more freedom, then perhaps Apple is working towards that. They're listening to your criticisms and they're trying to fix them with iOS 13. I'm also very interested to see how all of these app tiles and home screen redesigns are all going to be optimized on a device as tiny as the iPad mini. You know, when it comes to 13 inch iPad Pro, I can definitely see the advantage of a lot of this stuff. Having the calculator there, having maps here, being able to launch a messages on top of the news and not necessarily doing a split view, but just kind of layering different apps. It won't have X buttons in the corner, but you'll just be able to swipe them away to dismiss the apps. Going all in on gestures and making the absolute most capable operating system you can with gestures. I can see it being practical on 13 inch and 11 inch iPad Pros, but imagine doing all that on like an 8 inch iPad mini. I don't know, that might get a little too cluttered. And I think this is not included in the 9 to 5 Mac article, but it's quite possible Apple might give the iPad Pros and the bigger iPads like the iPad Air with the 10 and a half inch display, they may give them some more iOS 13 exclusives than the iPad mini will get simply because that screen is so tiny. How are they going to launch multiple apps on the screen at the same time? It already feels kind of cluttered when you do split screen on the iPad mini, but of course time will tell. Now when it comes to iOS 13 changes for the iPhone, a lot of people have described these changes are big, but in my opinion, they're small. They just go a long way. For one, the volume HUD finally being moved out from the center of the screen being so intrusive. 9 to 5 Mac is saying they're likely going to move that. I'm hoping that they kind of do what Android did and put the volume indicator right next to the volume buttons just because I feel like that's intuitive and that's where most people are naturally going to see that volume indicator change. It's been a heavily requested design change for years and while I don't see that as a huge feature, it's one that everyone's going to notice. It'll be one of those flagship like, oh, this device is on iOS 13 because the volume indicator looks totally different now. If they want to make it even smaller and put it up into one of the ears of the iPhone notches, that would be great too. Anything really that's not just a giant tile in the center of the screen, I would be happy with, and there's no denying it's needed to be updated for a long time. The other big change that 9to5Mac has also confirmed is a system-wide dark mode. So this is a setting that's not going to be in individual apps, it's going to be, like described, a system-wide version of dark mode, similar to Mac OS, where you go into system preferences and you can change the appearance to dark, and it will do its best to darken out all of those white pixels on your screen and turn them to a more easy on the eyes dark pixels. They're likely going to do that with iOS this year and it'll be in the settings, meaning it will affect Apple Music, Messages, Email, which a lot of people were requested by far last year when I watched the Worldwide Developers Conference. My chat was essentially blowing up saying, where is dark mode? I want dark mode. I want dark mode. Heavily requested feature and I think a lot of people are going to want it. But also remember, a lot of dark mode relies on third parties, which have kind of already made dark modes. Facebook Messenger has a dark mode now. Twitter has a true black dark mode, even for OLED devices. YouTube has a pretty dark mode. Discord is already kind of dark mode by default. So it's really only going to change those native apps, even though a lot of us use third-party apps regularly. I imagine things like Instagram, who doesn't quite have a dark mode yet, probably still won't have one by the time iOS launches their system-wide dark mode, which we'll be really happy about, but then third parties are going to be kind of the party pooper, because you're going to open that app and realize, ah, this app still has really bright pixels and there's still no dark mode yet, so iOS getting it is just kind of hyping on that modern train of like, hey, this is what everyone's doing, I guess we should do it too, which is why I get that it's heavily requested, I just think for the iPhone, it's not going to be that massive of a change, because once you turn it on, you're just going to be like, oh, okay, pixels are darker now, yay, it's easier to look at. Moving on, it's not really a functional feature, it's more of a convenient aesthetic, which I'm not against being there, I'm perfectly happy to turn on dark mode, and as soon as it does come out, I'm going to toggle it on as well, just I feel like the hype is a little bit over the top for it. People are acting like it's the best feature ever and it's going to change everything, when in reality it's just a little bit nicer. Just like activating dark mode on Messenger or Twitter, you're just like, oh, that's nice, okay, turned it on, and then you get used to it in 15 seconds. It will wear off and not be impressive very, very quickly as soon as you update to iOS 13. So those are the main big features that 9to5Mac talked about in their article. Of course, there's lots of other stuff, but those are the ones I wanted to highlight today and why in the past I've said always keep your expectations low for the next generation of iOS because you're going to disappoint yourself. But with 9to5Mac's track record of being right a lot of the time, I'm hearing all these and going, okay, if they're right about everything and all the stuff they talked about in iOS 13 ends up happening, I will be 
happy. I will be satisfied if Apple just goes on stage and confirms everything 9to5Mac talked about. I'm sure there's gonna be a ton more stuff we didn't talk about today that likely none of us care about, like new Animoji support or some kind of security features that iOS adds that it's like, it's even more secure now. And I'll be like, okay, great. I'm sure there will be a ton of features we don't care about that we're gonna have to sit through at this event. But either way, if all the stuff they talked about happens, I'll be happy. I'm happy to hear that the iOS on the iPad is going to be more specific to those larger screens. They're trying to take advantage of the iPad's power and make it into more of a laptop replacement. And as someone who uses my 13 inch iPad Pro every day, I'm happy to hear about that. And in regards to dark mode, volume HUD moving, I'm just kind of like, cool, needed that, thanks. I'll be over here on my iPad enjoying those new window tile support. Let me know what you guys are most interested in with iOS 13. What features are you looking forward to the most? And before I hear, Android has had this for years. We've had dark mode before. Our volume HUDs move over. Here's the thing about iOS 13. This is not just an update for phones, okay? This is an update for phones that came out five years ago, not just the Pixel line, and then the rest of you have to wait for six months before your phone even gets the latest version of Android. Sometimes even longer. Sometimes it'll take years before you get the latest version of Android. But also it's affecting all of our iPads. One of the most popular tablets on the planet is getting more utilization. So yeah, we're excited for iOS 13. And when I hear about Android Q getting a screen recording app, except it doesn't know how to stop recording yet. Yeah, I'm not that excited for Android Q. And also probably not that many viewers out there are excited for it because even when Google officially releases Android Q, it won't come to your Android phone for another eight months. That's why we're excited for iOS 13. Reliability, sustainability. We know when the OS is coming out. Apple announces all these features and they tell us what devices are getting them and usually they're pretty popular devices. Anyway, let me know what you're most hyped for down in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here and I will see you in the next one.